Happy lunch hour, gang. Okay, so uh, no big surprise. There's a presidential election here in the United States come November, right? We all know that. And crossing our fingers if polls, which historically don't mean squat, are right, it looks like Trump is at least leading well enough that chances are he wins. Okay, let's hope that we can turn this country around and do it. But just turning the United States around ain't going to do anything. All right. Now, there's some places where it's not going to make a difference. Russia just reelected Putin. So Putin's there for another six years. You know, uh, Xi Jinping isn't going anywhere. You know, it's not like the Chinese all of a sudden are going to go up. Communist is, communism's over, right? Or, you know, uh, Kim Jong-un is not going to abdicate the throne. <laughs> for all intents and purposes, in North Korea. But let's look at North America, okay? And we know with Justin Trudeau, the avowed sparkle socks, as our great friend, dear departed, North Shore Preparedness used to call him, uh, you know, is basically an avowed communist. Uh, and then we have President Obrador down in Mexico, who, for all intents and purposes, is a socialist. And then, of course, we have Joe Biden, which is somewhere in between socialism and communism. He's more of the fascist dictator type that wants the government to control everything. But it's starting to look like that the people are not going to put up with it anywhere. Not just the United States, but also in Mexico and also in Canada. So maybe with a little bit of luck, all of North America can go back to common sense here within the next year. Now, Mexico has their election in a month, okay? It's June 2nd. And the conservative candidate, Claudia Scheinbaum, sounds like a real Mexican name to me, right? Okay, is crushing the competition. I mean, this isn't close. In the polls and conservatism, and the way when I'm using conservatism, I'm going conservatism by the way the U.S. defines it, by the way we define conservatives here. Okay, Claudia Scheinbaum currently is polling at fifty-eight percent. Uh, the second candidate, uh, Zochil Galvez, is polling at thirty-five. And Jorge Al, uh, alvarez Minez is pulling at 8%. So we've got a really good chance of seeing Mexico flip, which is good for a lot of things, especially the southern border, okay? Because Obrador, of course, has been, you know, he's this is the guy that came up and said $20 billion a year to Latin America and will, you know, to Latin American countries coming from the United States and then will help stop, you know, so extorting the United States. Now, I'm not going to even pretend that I know a whole lot out of Claudia Scheinbaum's extortionist type ideas, how she works with the cartels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, okay, all being said, her positions on a lot of things are much more conservative than liberal. Let's just leave it that way. And then you get up to Canada, which Canada has their election next year, okay, 2025. And right now, the leading candidate in uh, to replace Justin Trudeau is, and my French sucks, Pierre Polievre, okay, I think somewhere around there. Again, conservative. So what's going to have to happen in North America? Well, you're going to see Mexico, Canada, and the United States all basically spend a couple of years undoing the damage that all of these hopefully elected leaders will done from their predecessors. Now, you wonder why I say that all three are going to flip to conservatives. If you look historically, Canada's the same, Mexico's the same, the United States is the same. 
Political parties in control ebb and flow. If I look through my entire life, life basically, we flip parties. The only time we have not flipped parties after a president was after Reagan's eight years. We got four years of George H.W. Bush. Okay, But I mean, other than that, it's Democrat for four or eight, then Republican for four or eight, then Democrat for four or eight, you know, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. The same thing happens in Canada. The same thing happens in Mexico. Chances are it will happen again. It's not a guarantee, but it, you got to find the silver lining in the clouds sometimes, certainly. Then you start looking at what's going on in Europe. Okay, well, we had uh, Georgia Maloney win in Italy. They flipped over to conservative. I mean, obviously, we know Viktor Orban in Hungary. Some of the other European countries are starting to tip. People get sick of one-party rule. And the majority of the world believes in more centrism, okay? They're not far left, they're not far right, and so they like some change. Because what happens every time in every country is one party gets in, involved, uh, you know, gets in control, and then they start ramming down people's throats policies that are unpopular, okay? And I mean, pick one. And the other side gets hot and bothered and the moderates get upset and so it's like okay we need a change there's nobody in the world that's going to be able to come up i mean as much as biden tries that the economy in the united states is good that crime in the united states is good that the illegal invasion uh forces that are coming across the board are good so you all have the conservatives that of course are screaming and yelling and you have a good portion of the independents, the moderates, the middle of the road, the people that could go, ah, you know what, I voted for George W. Bush, but I also voted for Barack Obama. You know, you get those people that flip back and forth. Yeah, those people are not going to be able to, with a good conscience, go, you know what, I really want four more years of Biden. You know what, I really want somebody to, to continue Trudeau's failed policies. You know, I really want somebody to continue extorting the United States or, or working in conjunction with the cartels down in Mexico. The people don't support that. All we see on the news over and over and over again is the people talking on the far left of the spectrum, the people talking on the far right of the spectrum. Okay, Any country, it's all the same. You know, you see all these protests going on at universities over Israel and Palestine, right? Okay. Oh, we've got to stop this. Oh, we've got to stop. I mean, these are all uber leftists. They're all supported by George Soros. I mean, come on. If you haven't figured out this isn't a coordinated effort, effort by looking at all the matching tents that are out there, you know one group is paying for everything. And it's usually Soros' money. Okay. You know, it's funny that they're protesting all the killings, if you will, in Israel, yet if you look at the news this morning, uh, that Hamas is firing rockets into Israel. So, yeah, uh, you know, once you tell your side to stop fighting, you know, all you social justice warriors there who, you know, are afraid to pick up a rifle, but you're more than happy to pick up a Palestinian flag and wave it around in the United States. Okay. Every once in a while, we need positive, something to look forward to. What happens in Mexico on June 2nd is going to be pretty telling for what happens in November in the United States. Why do I say that? Well, we have a lot of Hispanics, a lot of Mexican, Mexican-Americans, I mean, I'm not talking about illegals, I'm talking about people of Mexican heritage that live in the United States, that still have family in Mexico or whatever. 
And they will watch what happens down there. They don't like what's going on. They don't like seeing the criminal element running through. They don't like seeing all these people taking advantage of Mexico, et cetera, et cetera. If we see Mexico flip from Obrador uh, uh, over to Scheinbaum, that's going to be very telling for what happens in the United States. We keep seeing all the, oh, Biden's ahead by a point, Trump's ahead by two. I don't buy any of that, okay? I think they are oversampling liberals like crazy, which is pretty much typical. Everything that I can see, it looks right now, if the election was held today, Trump would probably win 315 electoral votes, okay? It would be a landslide. If that happens, if Scheinbaum wins in Mexico, Trump wins in the United States, you can pretty much bet that Canada flips too. And maybe with a little luck, we can have four years for the United States, six years for Mexico, moving on down the line. Uh, maybe we can have a little bit of sense of normalcy, at least in North America. Hopefully Europe continues on the path of throwing the liberals out, you know, the baby out with the bathwater. You still look at stupid stuff. London reelected. Uh, Mayor Khan over the weekend. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, maps change. Countries change. You look at the maps of Europe in 1900. Let's do it this way. Look at the map of Europe in 1924 and look at the map of Europe in 2024 and look at the countries that no longer exist Look at, the, look at the countries that now exist. Okay, Maps change. Countries come and go. It's all because of politics. Hopefully, if we can get away from the murdering, warmongering, social justice, climate bullshit, liberal idiots, maybe at least for a few years, we may have a sense of life is normal again. But then again, the next election will roll around and chances are it all flips back to crap. Cross your fingers for what happens in the next 12 months in North America. Hope for the best, but don't get a false sense of security because when it all flips the other way again, all we're getting is four more years hopefully, to get better prepared for the day that this all blows up. Pinball out.